Hello and welcome to Pricing College with your hosts Aidan Campbell and Joanna Wells. In today's episode we want to dig a bit bit deeper into what we discussed in the last episode about companies driven by operations and one of the I suppose one of the real signals we, we often see when we look at look at a company and look at a, a pricing optimization or pricing you know strategy change the first thing to look at is how is the business structured is it structured by functional lines or you know operations delivery sales marketing in that mechanism or is it done in a different way and probably one of the most common mechanisms we see is by cost centers or revenue centers by geography even by city um, divided up that way where you might have and this is very common in Australia certainly in B2B where you'll have a state general manager or a city general manager and that person he or she will be in charge of seemingly everything in that area so say you're the state general manager of South Australia you run Adelaide you account to your you know head honcho wherever they're based and um, you know in your, in your monthly meetings and you take responsibility for your P&L and we've heard it said very many times oh I own the P&L it's all my responsibility but we want to point out when we see that it's a real warning signal yeah see so often people don't realize how much organizational design can interrupt derail pricing strategy or price improvement programs they have a huge influence and largely because they can speed up um, implementation and thinking and strategizing if designed correctly or they can seriously slow it down slow it down and make it completely ineffective because you end up going end up sort of like bottlenecking at certain points in the organizational structure simply because the strategy or the key players the senior players are distributed across different states because you've got a different type of structure and what we found overall is when you have like a number of key decision makers who really have pricing control um, some of whom may agree to change, others who may just comply and don't agree to change. What can happen is things slow down tremendously. Things don't get done, basically. And when you find that strategy is almost distributed across a number of different leaders in, in, in a region, things get very, very messy. Uh, innovation and problem solving slows down and ultimately you really do need to think about centralizing process that centralizing that um, that strategizing initially straight away and then maybe decentralizing the execution uh, and, and that's kind of the way you know more flexible organizational structures are being built to enable pricing projects um, uh, to to succeed you know we see, we see it so often whereby you have a marketing department or a sales department um, you'll have sales departments local and national you'll have um, you'll have a marketing department generally sent nationally focused you know and then there's a real disconnect there's almost like a disconnect between the head office and between you know the people in in that area and when there's a, a geographic distance but also when People do what they're incentivized to do and what they're paid to do. And if your boss is the person in that in your city, you do what they tell you fundamentally because they just, they determine your career and your, your prospects. You know, so you're probably not really uh, utilizing the marketing that's happening. The marketing team probably are distanced from you, and there's not really any overlap. And probably the pricing, I'd be honest, is probably done very much on a on a on your localized basis. So that what's happening at central head office probably doesn't make much sense to you. And with that then, with that disconnect, there can become internal politics, there can become one against the next. And it, it just, it leads to value destruction, I would argue, in many regards, because all decisions are being taken at a, at a local level. Uh, there's nothing joined up. There's often a lot of duplication happening. And um, it's, it's, it's very much based around this year's operational aspect. This year, you know, we're going to if, especially when capex is a big indicator of that it's very much this year's financials not really the future of the business not really value creation not really improving the value offered to customers and it's um yeah it's it's just one of those red herrings not of red herrings the right word but more alarm bells that we see and when you see it you know look a bit deeper because i'm sure there's going to be duplication there's going to be misalignment of objectives and almost certainly there's going to be value destruction yeah because you've got to think about this uh, when, when, if to do pricing well and to be to get the sort of 
EBIT growth that you're expecting, you know, 10, 15% EBIT growth from, from a pricing project. What you need to do is work smart and work, I suppose, be agile. You, an, a team, a pricing team need, needs to, to do their job properly and get, and get the money that you want. They need to work across the business to get key sources of information and, and support. They also need to work up and down the business. And by this, I mean, they need to work with, this, with executives to get sponsorship, to push, um, I, you know, to push the business planning process forward, uh, to inform segmentation, to inform business strategy, because that too may have to change. And also down, they've got to work with customer services, sales team, find out key business intelligence sources to then inform their price setting process. And also then further, further out, they've got to work with, understand customers, get involved with that because ultimately if their pricing is disconnected with the customer base, it's just not going to work. So really what I'm, what I'm trying to say, if you're working, you, you, you can't expect to get the outcomes from pricing if you don't appreciate the agility involved in doing so. And if, if you're in a very traditional business structure, you've got to think of other ways to mobilize your pricing project because working within a broken or a very traditional uh, uh, structure does not yield the results um, and the speed of results that you're that you're expecting. Things are going to be difficult. So, you know, look, we we can there are there are a lot of ways you can get around around this sort of thing. Um, and we're more, you know, we've got a lot of resources on, on our page just to go through some of those ideas. So feel free to, you know, download those resources on our resources page at taylorwells.com.au or, or feel free to get in touch. I'm not saying that it's impossible to do a pricing project in a traditional, slow moving organisation. It just becomes harder and you've got to be more creative about how you do it because pricing fundamentally does require that you, you work across the business. And if you have silos in your business, largely created by your reporting structure or organizational design, you can't ignore it. You can't just say, oh, that's just a people issue. We can work across that because we're optimizing prices. It's a purely numbers game. That will not work. It just won't. You'll only get so far with that sort of stuff and, and then it'll just be left. Yeah, I think I think the last point I'd like to make is when we say you know you have to be all moving in alignment. This does not mean at all that everything's centralised and you, you know you do what you're told and people wherever you're located you, you, you just follow the script. At the end of the day, customer focus really is. If you're a salesperson, it really is your market intelligence, your knowledge of that local market, because obviously value can be very local aspects. It can be proximity, local competitors, you know, what's driving the market at that point in time. And so that aspect of stuff really has to be taken into account. I'm, I'm a big believer that they should be on a functional level. It should be, if it's a sales thing, that should be flowing through to the sales department. That should be flowing through to people who really understand sales, have the you know, the, the ability to lobby for sales and to help that in the business. And then obviously that should be working with marketing, getting you the marketing collateral you need so that it's working correctly. If it's done on a more siloed P&L basis in a geography and there's no direct contact between sales people on, you know, out there meeting customers to sales directors and sales leadership, that's where it falls down. So we're not saying it's, uh, you know, the empire dictates what you know what, what people do it has to be it has to make sense does it fundamentally make sense to you if you kick the tires does it make sense and does it help so when you're working when you're entering stuff into systems does it come back with benefits to you or is it just purely a you know almost a, a, a more work on your back that that, that that you don't get any benefit from yeah that's it for me yeah, me too. And as I say, you know, feel free to, to jump on our website, download some resources and guides. They can really help you in this regard. And also, if you're thinking about pricing uh, transformation or price change improvement programs, we've got lots of good stuff there just to guide you through it. Thanks again. Thanks a lot.